Thanks, uh, thanks very much. Um, my name is Peter Matz Molinetto. I have a funny surname. My dad's from Barcelona. I'm from Wales, and I live in Ireland, so I'm a pretty confused guy. But uh, um, I used to be a pharmacist. I still am a pharmacist. And I still work on a Sunday counting pills, so I do have a different perspective. Anyway, um, I chose this subject because it's something we as a company come across very often when we're either pitching for business or when we win pitches and we get involved in trying to produce projects. And it's something I feel that if we don't get this right as a group in this room, could damage the whole channels of digital media. There's a lot of misinformation about return on investment. There's a lot of different interpretations of it. And my next sort of 15 minutes hopefully will give and it's my view, so forgive me, it's me, it's my view, uh, based on some evidence gathered along the, along the way. So uh, there's gonna be a little bit of background, a look at ROI as a measure, I'm gonna show some regarding um, the use of digital media and how it's been shown and some suggestions for the way forward. So I'm gonna whiz through these because we, this is a group of evangelists. You know, if we didn't believe in digital media or weren't interested in it, we wouldn't be here now. But Somebody said to me on the stand earlier today, you know, it's great, I've learned some fantastic stuff today, but when I go back to head office tomorrow, I'm going to have to convince my manager, my line manager, that we should try this. I'm going to have to convince him that we should do things differently. And we all know that we're not great at change management in, in, in the pharmaceutical industry. So arming yourself with data and with statistics and with lots of data that you'll get you know, from this conference can only help you in that process. So, you know, I, I whiz through two or three slides quickly because I don't want to bore you with stats. We all know that, but I think it's important that if you're in that position, you go back and arm yourself with such statistics so that you can begin to convince and begin the process of getting your fellow team members and fellow people on board. I thought it was quite sad earlier where we were, t we were talking about compliance there's only two people in the audience that, were f that had a compliance hat on. That's got to change, guys. If we're going to move this whole medium forward, this channel forward, we've got to get legal people, we've got to get medical people, we've got to get compliance people in the same room as us so they understand the challenges and the problems that are going forward. So we know what's, what's driving this. We know that the increase in broadband connectivity, we know the evolution of media habits. Okay, that second one's an interesting one, the evo evolution of media habits. As I said earlier, I am a pharmacist. I still do work counting tablets. I still do the odd consultancy in hospitals in Ireland. How many of you have been on a ward recently? Okay, would you agree, what would you say about the use of mobile phones by junior doctors? Staggering, absolutely staggering. And, y you know, it, it's to me, it's you only have to go to ward round once and see them going on grand rounds or what have you and see them on their mobiles or, or with their, their, their iPads to see that this is the way forward. Now, often, as we get more senior in our roles in the pharmaceutical industry, as we lose touch with the coal face of sales, as we lose touch with the coal face of KOLs, we don't see that. And it's going to be dependent on people like ourselves in the room to convince the, the guys that are like me over 40 that maybe we should be divesting money from one element of the marketing mix into this area. So why aren't we using digital media? Well, I know this has been said before today, so forgive me, but you know, we're quite slow as an industry to use innovative channels. It's quite a paradox, isn't it? We're one of the most innovative industries in the world when it comes to drug delivery and drug design, yet we're not very good when it comes to communicating that to the outside world. This was a, um, a quote from a financial director saying the climate is forcing firms to innovate. The sector is the biggest sh shakeup for decades. Our previous uh, speaker uh, already mentioned that her company had been taken over by a bigger company. That's only going to increase <laughs> over the next five years. So we've all got to be innovative and we've got you know, to, to get that competitive edge. So does this sound familiar? I come across this all the time as barriers to the pharmaceutical industry using my services. Often they'll say, well, it's hard to change practice internally. There's no acceptance of new technology. We don't understand it. We haven't got the resources. Oh, we had a bad experience. It was very expensive. 
and there's a lack of t knowledge of the target audience as, you know, as to whether they're actually using it, which I find surprising. So this room is very much on the right, on the believers. You know, they believe in using digital media. They believe that sometimes maybe it can replace face-to-face -face right up. So they believe maybe not using print. And they, then there's this side. And this side is still very much part of the real world, unfortunately. It's still very much part of guys who look at ROI on their business as a whole. They look at the P&L on a daily basis. They look at lines within that P&L. I think it was Kai Gate uh, uh, earlier that said that you know, often dig the digital line in a marketing budget is often the one to be blocked off or reduced because maybe they don't understand the implications of that current campaign. So ROI is important and traditionally it's how much we spend, how well did it work? But I'm going to ask the question today, is this actually relevant and should we be actually using ROI as a calculation in digital marketing. Forgive me, this is off Wikipedia, it's been mentioned a lot today, but this is the standard ROI uh, equation. And it's very flexible. Different people use it in different ways. That could be used to our advantage, but I'm suggesting to you, to you today, it's a disadvantage for us in digital media and people who are involved in it. Because when you mention ROI at a senior level of management, they think of cash, cash in, cash out in terms of sales. And if we keep talking about ROI in digital media, we're always going to lose. Because it's very difficult to actually translate elements of the marketing mix that are involved in digital media with a direct increase in sales. Very difficult to disentangle it from other, other areas of the marketing mix. So I'm suggesting today we should get away from using the term ROI. Immersion technologies are often difficult and slow to show improvements. And here are some of the metrics that we can measure. Now, we all know these. We all know these. They've been mentioned. And you go around the stands, and you'll see them in the fall today about click-through rates, delivered emails, customer complaints, YouTube, etc. But you know, are they even relevant? Because if you look at this statement, if you measure the click as an important metric of online advertising, it does seem logical. It's, we can measure it, so we should measure it. It's there. But how often <laughs> do we do that with other elements of the marketing mix? If we did that in print, and I am a medical publisher, I'd be out of business a long time ago. You know, if we did it on the impact of conferences, spending X amount of money taking KOLs to the AHA, you know, we'd never do it. So I think... We have to be careful when, because we can measure it and we can measure it, to overemphasize that element of it and call it ROI. Maybe a better question, and it was hit on earlier, is that to ask ourselves, what if I didn't do that activity? What if we didn't have a presence there? What would the outcome be? And if the outcome is, well, it doesn't matter if we did it or it doesn't matter if we're not there, then maybe, maybe we shouldn't do it. Maybe that's the type of question we should be asking, and maybe that's the type of argument we should be putting forward to senior managers to justify the activities in digital marketing. So, I've come up with a new idea, forgive me. And we use it with some of our clients to help justify this ROE, return on e-vestment. And what we're suggesting is that ROE is part of an overall digital so as part of an overall marketing mix, and we can measure the KPIs, key performance indicators, up front, measure them, not in relation to sales or money, but in relation to activities that we all like, like that long list that we mentioned earlier. In that way, the finance directors, your finance managers, will not get confused, will not get confused with the term ROI, ROE. And then you get to the whole thing of loyalty. You know, if a digital campaign engenders trust and brand loyalty, then the knock-on financial benefits are enormous. And there's lots of examples. I've given one there as, uh, for Apple. But there's lots of others where if you do it right, loyalty just builds business business. And it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to convince your managers of that. How do we measure that? Well, that's difficult. Another way of looking at the whole digital aspect or a specific project 
I, I believe, is to split it into three elements. How do we attract them in the first place? What, what measures are we going to use to measure how well we've done to attract them to our website, to our email campaign, to our e-journal? Have we retained them? What's the unsubscribe rate? How often do they just dump the, the stuff in the, uh, in the trash bin? Do they pass it on to a colleague? And then there's a conversion rate. Through that action or through that project, you actually get them engaging in other activities on the same platform. So there's just three sim different ways of, of maybe measuring what we do. Again, forgive me, this has been said before, but these are sort of common sense actions that you can go back with that actually say, right, this is what we need to do when we're considering a campaign. Agree and challenge the metrics you're using for ROE. It was staggering, I thought, earlier when the, uh, we asked the audience how many people actually pre-put uh, forward some metrics when they underwent a, a digital uh, campaign. You'd expect everybody would put their hand up. I think it was very few actually put their hand up. So, but we need to be doing this. We need to be doing it early. Know your audience. And forgive me, this is not a knock against the new technologies, but I'm going to tell you a story that we were involved with in uh, a conference in Scotland. It was on transplant medicine. And the whole presentation was on the NICE guidelines, about how tight money was, how departments were closing because of lack of funding, how nurses were losing their jobs. Very common and very real issues for our target audience. When that audience came out of the um, symposium, they were fed through a, a, a tunnel that had four holograms of KOLs. And forgive me if the people who did this are in the audience today. But there were four holograms of doctors answering questions like something out of Star Wars. I've never seen a more inappropriate use of marketing material or of the technology. We just come from a base where the whole environment was about lack of funds and there we had a pharmaceutical company spending hundreds of thousands on a presentation. It was just inappropriate. So know your audience. By all means, let's use the technology wisely. Let's use it appropriately. But know your audience, know what they want, and know what they're going to accept from the new technologies that are there. But they're not all evangelists like we are in this room. Don't be afraid to try variations on a theme, measure their impact, plan, and pilot. Nearly everything we do, we pilot first. It gains confidence. It builds confidence with the client. It builds confidence with senior management that it can work. It builds confidence and on the budgetary side of things, that you can do something small and then build on it and scale it up later. Integration. It would seem like common sense, wouldn't it? But the amount of times that we see digital campaigns not at all aligned with the rest of the marketing mix. The mere fact that we have digital pioneers, the mere fact that we have digital specialists, tells me that the industry isn't really at that integration stage yet. I think it was said earlier on stage, you know, the ideal, there will be a day, I mean, you know, I'll be long retired then, when digital marketing and digital is just part of the overall mix and there will be no need for digital agencies, there'll be no need for digital managers, there'll be no need because it'll become commonplace. But we're not there yet. So integration, you know, you still need to keep your eye on it. This is a real bugbearer of mine, so forgive me if I sound. <laughs> Content is and always will be king. There's a lot of very interesting products upstairs there's a lot of very interesting ways and platforms of delivering the message. But if the content is poor, then you're doing the channel a disservice. And there's more of this going on than you realize. If the KPIs or the indicators for a particular project are not met, it's not necessarily the fault of the channel. It could be that the content's crap. Okay? You know, let's forget the ego of our medcoms agencies or our creative people. Doctors are using the internet, they're using email, they're using each other, they're using the e-channels. We can give you an abundance of information on that. If your project has failed, 
go back to the drawing board and don't question the channel, question the content you're throwing down it. We did a project six weeks ago, and I wish I hadn't done it now. We, I begged the agency to change the creative on it. We were just being used as a channel to the market. We weren't involved in the content, we weren't involved in the creative element of it. And I looked at it and I said, are you serious? You actually want to produce this to doctors? I showed it to my eight-year-old daughter, she was bored with it in three minutes. It was an interactive game that allowed the doctor to park this vehicle at certain spots. And when he parked at certain spot, he got information. This was clearly an ego trip for some creative guy to look at the technology that was available and say, wow, look what we can do. At no point, I would suggest, had they done a focus group, or at no point had they even bothered to ask a doctor whether this was gonna work. We sent out 12,000 emails, four doctors interacted with it. They came back to me and said, your channel's crap. I said, sorry? They said, your channel doesn't work. I said, have you looked at what you just put down it? So, please, you know, it seems obvious, but don't alienate doctors. Don't let the technology trivialize what we as an industry are trying to do. And what we're trying to do at the end of the day is educate doctors so they can prescribe our products more effectively. Right, here are some examples. Well, we talked about email newsletters. Here's a quote from Jack and Nielsen. He reckons 65% forward newsletters. I've, I've never reached that figure. I think the most we've ever got is about 35%. Here's an example we did in the UK of a GP-led initiative with high profile. We started off with 5,000 subscribers. The KPI was to get to 7,000 by the end of the year. We got to 12. So that was a positive ROI or ROE for that particular client. This was in a very niche market in Ireland. There's only 80 people involved in prostate cancer in Ireland, so it's very difficult to justify expenditure or, or spend. So we did a variation on a theme whereby we had some technology we used in one element uh, or a different therapy area. We were able to, to, to use and transfer it very cheaply for this particular client, and they're getting 70, 80% hit rates or 78% readership now for this particular journal. The KPI on this was 50%, which is very high. I didn't think we'd reach it, but we, but we did. Now this is the piece de resistance, if you like. This is a project we did in Holland for a company called Gold Shield. And it's what the theory guys would call a perfect naive market. And what I mean by that was, this company hadn't been active in Holland for seven years. There was no sales force, there was no other marketing activity other than a website and a web key that we used. And you'll see examples of web keys upstairs. In terms of getting it through approval, we first had to liaise with the compliance managers to see what we could actually say to doctors in Ireland. And we had to produce the whole thing in English because their compliance managers didn't speak Dutch. So we did it in English first. We then used a reputable translation service who gave us a certificate of translation. So if they, any translation was wrong, they had to come back. And we did a mailing to 12,000 GPs with a web key that drove people to this site. And if you haven't seen web keys, this is what they are. They're uh, a tool that you put into your uh, computer and it takes you directly to a website. You can also have them as part of a, a page. And there's lots of examples upstairs. I suggest you have a look. They're quite innovative stuff. This is the results we got, 12,000, 4,000 signed up to receive the newsletter. Staggering result, perfect naive market, no other activity. This resulted, this is the geographical distribution for the, for the content in Holland. Sorry, I'll go back. This resulted in a 25% increase on budget sales. So they reached their budget and then went 25% over on this activity alone. So if anybody of you need evidence that digital marketing works and can increase sales, this is one of the few examples you can go back with and say, nothing else in that marketplace happened apart from a website and some digital keys. This is one we did with a, uh, a company increasing, how am I doing for time? Yep, okay. 
uh, on medical CPT, and that's a whole other area, but it's an area that we should be exploring because an educated doctor is a prescribing doctor at the end of the day. Building communities with digital media is crucial. There's lots of people upstairs who will show you how to do that, but I really believe that's got to be the way forward. You take you from promotion to partnership, serve the community with good quality content, and they will come back and your unsubscribe rate will go down. KOLs and healthcare professionals, they want the details of the latest developments. Don't be afraid to give them information outside of your own brand or your own disease area. In Ireland, we're lucky enough now to have 65% receiving at least one e-journal. It's a small market, but that, those figures can be achieved. Editorial also print appears on other mediums, so integration is, is crucial. Two plus two equals five. Well, the theory goes that if you put the message on one channel and it's echoed in a second channel, then the effect is much greater than exposure and isolation. So what's the evidence for that? Well, Metrics Lab Europe are a company that were involved with the McDonald's campaign. So it's not farmer, it's beef burgers. But they looked at the campaign, the McDonald's campaign, and they showed that after the first 20% of the spend on traditional media, there was no increase or no increase on in impact. 20%, no increase. More spend wasn't touching more people, it was just hitting the same people again and again in the same way. So what they did is they suggested that the media wastage was high in traditional media, and they introduced some new media. And they showed a 51% increase in the result. And they suggesting, they're suggesting, independent body, that people should be spending between 14 and 20% of their marketing budget on digital media. Interesting. More facts to go back to your managers with. If you add online to offline, you get a big boost. Same budget, better results. We did this in Ireland, and we showed that the cost per doctor attention by combining media is reduced from about 300 euros down to about 70. The opportunity to see increased 132%. So there is data out there that shows ROI, but I beg you, be careful, because with ROI, you've got to be very sure of put what you put into the equation to know what you're going to get out. And here's a shameless plug. This is our new company, Health PR Zone, and I hope you come and see us at the stand. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Are there any questions over there? So I think most people in this room would agree that any individual item is part of a marketing mix. It's very challenging to do an ROI of that item in isolation. Do you think digital is inherently more difficult than you know, anything that makes up the marketing mix? I, I think it's more difficult because it's easy to measure. That sounds like a, a contradiction. But the fact that we can measure it, there's a danger that we overemphasize the importance of those individual measurements. That's the point I'm trying to get across. I think we can measure it, we should measure it, we should plan our campaigns and have key uh, performance indicators and challenges beforehand. Of course we should do all that. But I think, you know, as evangelists or as, as people who are trying to promote the study, we've got to be careful about what those figures mean. And that's the point I think I'm trying to get across. It's very difficult to disentangle it, but let's not get too carried away with the measurement side of it. We've got to do it, but let's you know, take it in context of the rest of the mix. Okay, there, there was also a question on, the, on Twitter, is that um, sure we should measure, uh, but how do we convince the boys and the girls who have an unhealthy focus on the letters P and L? How should we convince them of ROE? R R yeah, I, I think that's a really, Difficult question. Hopefully some of the stats that we've showed here today maybe help that argument because there's very little data out there that shows digital media in isolation and the Dutch study was one of those. There's, we can take, um, certainly we can take reticence from, from other disciplines where they've shown maybe like the McDonald's side of things that you can transfer st statistics from one market into the other. But I think I would go back to them and say, okay, here are the implications if we don't do this. 
if we don't want to get down this road, if we don't want to engage this project, if we don't want to engage these healthcare professionals in this way, here are what I think are the implications for that. And it could be that you lose brand loyalty, you lose brand voice, you lose uh, awareness, or what have you. And maybe those are more, and for the, the, the gray suits, that I'm wearing one, uh, for the gray suits, maybe for those people, it's, it's a more, uh, something they can get their hand around a little bit easier. Does anybody has experience with, uh, with uh, oh, there's a question, yes. Yes, uh, I myself, I'm a brand manager in marketing, and um, I got, so it's more a comment, because I get, every week, I think I was thinking about it, I get different proposals of a new technology, and there's always a good reason to do it. And um, I think to me, I mean, the best advice uh, for convincing is before even going to do a, a technology, to sit down with the brand manager and say, what is your technology, uh, your strategy? So are you, if you're targeting elderly or pediatric, if you're doing brand strategy or you're doing a disease awareness strategy, the technology is not going to be the same. And then, and I'm also one of those guys who says, I haven't got the time. Because the true thing is that the content is the most important. And that when, we, uh, when the technology comes, we have to follow up and do all of the updating and things like that. So you have to really keep that in mind when you come with a proposal. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Other questions? Does anybody has experience with these conversations with uh, uh, the guys and the girls higher in the top about ROE, uh, ROI, or what have you? And because we've been he hearing this, of course, already a long time, and uh, for those of you who have attended these meetings, uh, every time it comes up, who in the meantime has had these discussions and what came out? Who wants to share that? Nobody? Nobody had these discussions? Yeah? <coughs> I, I agree with him. It's more showing the value of the activity that you can show by uh, equivalent. For example, a webinar is very easy to, to show the value of a webinar because uh, the co incremental cost is very little. Uh, that rather than having uh, how much uh, sales we could ha we have increased in a particular area versus webinar versus a, a face to face meeting so the the key thing is always try to show the value in money because we are living in a difficult situation so one, one way we did that with one client was um, they were taking um, 25 doctors to an international conference and we convinced them to take two less doctors and we did a basically a, a web-based Q&A with some of them talking heads. And when we came back, we put it on a website and we put it down all our channels. So they took 23 doctors, but when they came back, those same messages from the conference were actually viewed by 260 doctors. So that was a very easy ratio to say, right, you saved two doctors' fees that you then spent on this activity, but you got 260 other doctors to actually read the messages. So it's that type of activity that maybe the same money, but increased impact. Okay, if there are no further questions, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you.